I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello, and welcome back to another episode here at the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Mark Middlestead. This week, our topic is resistance. And on today's episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast Weekend Edition, I'm going to discuss resistance is pointless. Yes, we've all heard the famous line from Star Trek's enemy, the Borg, who are human-like robotic aliens. Resistance is futile. In many ways, it is an exercise in futility especially for those who cling to the programming of the robotic human tribes we grew up in. There is a reason Star Trek's creator, Gene Roddenberry, created the fictitious Borg. He based them on human behavior. The tribes we grew up in, like our family, friends, and society, all deeply programmed us to assimilate to their ways and customs. Resistance is not only futile, but any attempt is also quite pointless. Our tribes, much like the Borg, want us to be just like them, where individuality does not serve the collective, whose number one objective and mission is to ensure the survival of it. Questioning it weakens it. It cannot survive without everyone within it supporting it. Much like governments, our own tribes have no real power on their own. They only have as much as we are willing to give them. So their programming is only as effective as the power we give it. Have any of you considered the possibility that everything you believe in exists only because you believe in it? Imagine that you didn't believe any of it. None of it would be anything more than an illusion. What we resist persists. It sounds counterintuitive. Our programming teaches us to fight back, attack and defend, to put up a barrier to the things we dislike about life and to challenge anything outside our comfort zone. We resist almost everything in life that we are not okay with. And we are not okay with a lot of things, almost all of which is outside our control anyway. Yet we keep resisting it. And it keeps showing up in our life until we learn to let it go. But we can't let it go and also want to engage in it and dwell in it or make it the focus of our life. It will continue to hold us back and manifest itself in a variety of ways in our reality, but eventually manifesting in our physical body as some kind of dis-ease. The body supports the mind. We can argue our point and fight for our reasons, our justification of why we need to keep resisting the source of our problems, yet we are really in a battle with the symptoms, not the real source. Our problems are never because of anything external. Yes, the external world is always going to bring up things in our experience that we are going to resist but it is our internal resistance that creates our problem. We've all dealt with the influence from the pandemic in some form, but that was never the problem. The problem was our ego creating stories, and these scenarios created more fear. And now... We have the war in the Ukraine where a country is under attack. And because of the real fear, our ego magnifies it even more, creating stories about how it might affect us personally, always wanting to keep us caged in the fear of resistance. 
It's natural for us to want to fight back. But the answer to hate, violence, and even war is not more hate, violence, or war. The answer is always peace and love. This is also counterintuitive. When someone attacks us, either verbally or physically, our first response is always from the head, our mind, and the ego's desire to resist. But we must act from the heart, and this is where resistance cannot abide. The heart is open and will not resist. It lives in the eternal flow of life where love flows to us and from us like breath itself. There are gurus or teachers that have always lived among us and it is their teachings from the spiritual nature of all things where they taught us how to live life in the flow of the energy of the universe and how to heal ourselves by acts of non-resistance. Gandhi told us, Anger is the enemy of non-violence and pride is a monster that swallows it up. We are always living in the energy of anger when we resist something. The problem is, the more we live in this energy, the faster we move into the energy of pride. Pride in our point of view, our perspective, our tribes, our countries, Yet the differences between ourselves and our fellow man are illusions, and the borders between us are only imaginary lines. They aren't real. They are an illusion of the mind. We, in the United States, are so prideful that this illusion has isolated us. Know that there are no differences between the people of the Ukraine and those who live in the U.S. or even Russia. Human beings all around the world want connection and peace, regardless of where we live, and no matter where these imaginary borders of separation exist, we are all one. Resisting each other is really resisting ourselves. Everyone is a reflection of ourselves, where we see the worst in ourselves when we see the worst in others. Instead of resistance towards one another, we need to be more inclusive, open, and welcoming, even to those who are so very different from ourselves outwardly. One of the teachers I grew up with was John Lennon, among others. John Lennon was one of the voices of a generation who believed in peace and love. His philosophy about resistance could be summed up by his words when he said, When it gets down to having us having to use violence, then you are playing the systems game. The establishment will irritate you, pull your beard, flick your face, to make you fight. Because once they've got you violent, then they know how to handle you. He made the point that once they have us resisting, they know exactly how to manipulate us because then we are playing their game. The only answer is peace and love. Martin Luther King Jr. is also another voice of a generation who said that Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Darkness, hate, violence are the tools of resistance. These three teachers devoted themselves to creating a world of love and peace, not resistance. They all taught peaceful resistance, which is a bit of an oxymoron. They didn't resist by fighting back. In the dualistic yin-yang sense, they resisted by not resisting. Lao Tzu, in the 43rd verse of the Tao Te Ching, explains, That which offers no resistance overcomes the hardest substances. 
that which offers no resistance can enter where there is no space. Few in the world can comprehend these teachings or understand the value of non-action. It all seems so counterintuitive, but know that our confusion lies in our programming. Lao Tzu often referred to the power of water, being able to wear down even the hardest of objects, even though water resists nothing. He also told us that knowing others is intelligence, knowing yourself is true wisdom. Mastering others is strength, but mastering yourself is true power. Most people seek to acquire knowledge and use it to master others, when it is far more productive to let go and become the master of ourself and learn to go with the flow of life where the real power exists. Resistance is not power. It weakens us in the long run. John Lennon's song, Imagine, is a plea to stop resisting peace and love as the answer. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us. Above us, only sky. Imagine all the people living for today. Imagine there is no countries. It isn't hard to do. Nothing to kill or die for. And no religion too. Imagine all the people living life in peace. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will be as one. But of course, many resist this ideal as not being realistic. Yet we know that what we think we create, what we believe we attract, and what we imagine we become. Those that programmed us and continue to live in this programming are never going to stop resisting until they awaken from this programming and realize we are all one. Resistance keeps us separated. It always has and always will. Because what we resist persists. Look to our own personal lives for evidence of this. Look at anything you resist. Does this resistance bring you peace and joy? Of course not. Peace and joy cannot live in the state of resistance. Yet resistance is how we mostly live when we are not conscious spiritually. We're not even aware of being resistant. We cling to our faulty, programmed beliefs that we must always attack and defend, always feeling right in our thought and actions. But ask yourself if your thoughts and actions are born in love. Is it better to be joyful or to be right? If we are all God experiencing ourselves, resistance robs us of the full experience. No one wants to experience pain or suffering, but without it, the joy and peace we all seek will also not be fully experienced. It's the yin-yang of life. Everything in life is undergoing change, and nowhere does resistance rear its ugly head more than how we deal with change. We're resistant to change. We are programmed to desire our cage of comfort, even when this cage is something we are suffering in. We often seek change, but what most people are really seeking is a change in the external, be it our situation, circumstance, or a change in others. But we seldom seek change in ourselves, and even when we do, 
Our ego creates stories about what this change will bring, and it makes us uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable because it goes against our programming. It goes against our beliefs. You've heard me say this many times, but our programming runs very deep, and we cling not only to the programming we received in our youth, but even as we might grow and change, we can be caught up in new programming without even realizing it. No matter what the programming is or where it comes from, once we become comfortable in it, we will resist deviating from it. This resistance creates a new kind of comfort, and then all we are doing is trading one cage of comfort for another, still not fully experiencing life. If you haven't read Michael Singer's book, The Surrender Experiment, I highly encourage you to do so. It's all about being open to life and being willing to go with the flow, even when it appears to be uncomfortable or unsettling. To be more spontaneous and less set in our ways, be they old ways or new. Be open to life and be willing to accept things that come up and welcome them rather than resisting them. The world does not follow our plan. It follows a grander plan than we can ever imagine. And because we resist the spontaneity that life offers us, we can miss out on so much of this experience we call life. I have plans and goals, yet I also know that life offers me opportunity where sometimes my plans need to be adjusted to accommodate a new experience that may very well create an even better path than I otherwise would never have experienced. I've become quite aware of my own resistance to life. Nothing external from me can hold me back, but my resistance to it certainly can. I can't be resistant and open at the same time. I can't go with the flow of life and also resist it. I recently went on a trip that tested my resistance at every turn. Anyone who travels knows all too well how so much is out of our control. I found myself with all these well-planned sequence of events, from the driving, the plane trips, the schedule of events that, for whatever reason, I had expected to go smoothly. Nothing planned happened as planned and I was getting quite caught up in resisting things that weren't going my way, and all it created was more things not going my way. Finally, I stopped resisting and just began going with the flow. I threw my plans out the proverbial window, and while I still had a loose plan, I was willing to just accept everything that came our way without resisting any of it. Things still continued to not go as originally planned, but because I was no longer resisting any of it, the ability to just go with the flow made the experience more enjoyable, even though it was different than what I originally expected. Had I kept on expecting that my plans would go on as scheduled when they did not, I would have kept on being so resistant to the new things that appeared, I probably would have just been completely frustrated by the entire experience and end up missing out on so much. I enjoyed things I wasn't even aware were even available to me, so by surrendering to those changes life threw at us, I was able to experience new unexpected things. Be less resistant to change surrender to the experience of life and have no expectations and life becomes fascinating in a new way resistance isn't futile it's just pointless and it changes nothing except creating more to be resistant to slow down go with the flow of life in your experience will be far more rich and fulfilling. 
That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission by clicking like, share, and subscribe. The links are right below the show notes. As always, until next time, stay inspired.